What what are you telling your patients who are saying that they are hesitant or people that you know that are saying that they're hesitant, that they're afraid or, or concerned about getting this vaccine? Yeah, so I think I think about it from a from a perspective of, of what is it that we're trying to achieve? And everybody wants to get back to their version of normal. And so when you start thinking about how we achieve that, what we've been doing so far is staying away from each other, washing our hands until they're dry, um, and, and taking all the precautions so that we don't spread this deadly disease. And so that's what we've been doing for over the past year. I don't know that I see a way out of what we've been dealing with for the past year without the vaccine. So when you start talking about people that haven't seen their parents in over a year, or people that haven't been able to have their wedding, or in some cases, people that have had to postpone things like funerals, things that are like life altering events, you know, people applying to schools, trying to travel, uh, just do vacations and live normal life. We haven't been able to do those things because we don't think we can safely do them. So I see the vaccine as the most direct and expeditious avenue to get us back to what we want to call normal. And so that's what I've been advocating my patients. What about those who are saying, you know, I might get it, but let me wait and see what happens to everybody else first. The pushback that I would have to that is, is what we're seeing with the develop, development of variants of this virus. Um, so the way viruses work, they, they mutate the more times they replicate, the more time they make copies of themselves when people get sick and spread it from person to person. There's a chance for that, for that uh, virus to kind of alter its makeup and it can alter itself into a way that makes it stronger or more dangerous. And so the longer we wait, the more this disease spreads, the more chances it has to mutate and the more dangerous it becomes. So the longer we wait to try to get people vaccinated, the harder this becomes to be controlled. And the longer this process gets dragged out where we have to social distance and stay away from things and not gather. So again, I see this as the most efficient way to address this, um, even in light of the concerns of people getting a vaccine that they haven't heard of. I, I understand that concern, but I think that the risks of delaying intervention far outweigh the benefits of going ahead with the vaccine. The public hasn't had the opportunity to see um, some of what people like you have seen being inside the hospital walls uh, during the peak of this pandemic. Uh, what impact have you observed that COVID-19 has had on our community and and our neighbors? Never seen anything like it. I've been a physician going on 11 years now. Um, I've never seen anything swoop in so fast and so strongly and disrupt everything. Probably the one of the more striking things that I've seen is that at Spectrum Health, we are, we are very big on having families participate in their loved one's care. And we weren't able to do that. We weren't able to allow you know people's uh, kids to come in when grandma's having surgery. And, you know, grandma's 80 years old and we're trying to figure out, you know, does grandma want to go on the ventilator or not? Or she's sick from COVID and she's getting worse. And so we're talking to somebody that's in their worst moment without their safety net, without their family support, the people that help them make these decisions. And I think one of the hardest thing for us as, as physicians and APPs and nurses and techs is, you know, seeing these people in their most vulnerable state, not having that support system at their hip to help them navigate these sometimes life altering decisions and us not being able to do what we know is best practice to care for our patients. And it's it's stuff that keeps you up at night. Like, did I make the right call? You know, was I too paternalistic? Did, did the patient really say what they wanted to say? And are, are we making sure that they're being heard and that we're respecting their wishes when they get this sick and they can't speak for themselves? So it's been a real difficult thing to navigate, especially when it was at its worst. Do you think if folks saw what you've seen that they might feel differently about the vaccine? I think they would, and I can kind of speak to a couple of personal examples. I'll tell you one story about my, my cousin Kiku, um, who lived uh, down in Houston. He was 49 years old, and he called me when he was getting hospitalized uh, for uh, COVID-19. Uh, he was relatively healthy, a little bit overweight, but otherwise didn't have any medical problems. And he progressively got worse. He called me every day. Um, he ended up on the ventilator and he eventually passed away uh, from COVID-19 and left behind a fiance and five kids. And that's something that still haunts me to this day. Um, but what it allowed us to do, but when he was going on the ventilator, he, he told me 
make sure that you know we take care of the rest of the family let them know that this thing is real and it's scary and so you know i, I got on a phone call with you know my cousins and my aunts and uncles and we were kind of talking about things just kind of catching up like a zoom family reunion if you will and we kind of talked about these things and i said you know if you could have heard his voice and and the fear as things were getting worse uh, it would change your perspective on, oh, this isn't that big a deal or, or, you know, we don't need a vaccine. I'll just wait it out. I'm sure as a physician, there are medications and treatments that you don't use and don't recommend. But you're saying this vaccine, uh, all of them, you do recommend and you encourage your patients to get whatever they can get. What is it that makes this cross that line for you? I, get, I think the gravity of the situation, we've, we've heard the studies, we've heard the, the data that suggests that most people will recover from this if they get it. But when you look at the numbers, when you start talking about 500,000 people that died, and you start talking about millions that have been impacted, and the fact of all the downstream effects that happen because of this disruption, it's not so much it's partly that people could potentially end up on ventilators and potentially lose their life. But what about all the people that just get hospitalized or the people that have long term effects from this where we're seeing people weeks, months after they've had COVID that haven't quite recovered because they had a stroke or because they had a heart attack. The downstream effects for the people that don't have COVID that have their medical care delayed because the hospital's full. Those are real people that are having their heart surgery delayed and potentially suffer worse outcomes because we aren't we're not able to intervene as quickly as we normally would. So when I take a step back and look at all of the potential impact that comes from having this drag on in a protracted course, I think it's a no brainer for me to say that let's get the vaccine. How hopeful are you that these vaccines are the golden ticket out of uh, this pandemic? I would say I'm extremely hopeful. Uh, I think the science is there. I think the data is there. I think anytime you can have a random, the, the gold standard in research is the randomized control trial where they give some people the intervention and some people placebo, see what happens, blind you to it so that you can't be influenced by knowing who's getting what and seeing what the results are and being able to see that there is documented immunity after the vaccine at a high and sustainable level. I think that's what gives me hope that this is the way out of this such that we can fight through things like we've done through history, whether it's smallpox or influenza, uh, mumps, measles, rubella, all the things that we have vaccines for now that we've proven to be tried and true are why we don't have a great deal of uh, communicable diseases that are taking us out on a daily basis. I think the, the world got to see what life is like when you don't have a fix for something, when you don't have a vaccine for a highly infectious disease, how quickly it can spread and how rampant it can it can uh, can become. The more they see people getting it and doing fine and kind of starting to live their life because they feel comfortable now that they're vaccinated, the faster the ramp up will be and the, the better chances of, of that dream of getting back to some sort of normalcy by the end of the year, beginning of next year, become more of a reality.